What's up everyone, my name is Karma and today I'm going to show you guys how to calculate memory clock speed and memory bandwidth for GPUs. Now the reason why I made this video is purely because I found it pretty hard to find any material on this that made it very simple to explain. But we're going to go through HBM, HBM2, GDDR5 and GDDR5X and how you calculate the memory speed and bandwidth of those. So let's get straight into it. So for GDDR5, we have the RX 580. For GDDR5 X, we have the 1080 Ti. For HBM, we have the Fury X. And for Vega, we have HBM2. So yeah, this isn't confirmed anything here, but it should work in terms of calculations. So I'll just get on with this, I suppose. And I'll start with memory clocks first. So as you can see here, we have the memory clock per chip and the effective memory clock, which is the memory clock for the whole GPU. Now, what you need to understand about memory clock speeds is that in DDR5 memory or GDDR5 memory, the DDR stands for double data rate. So this is the double data rate. And if you divide this number by two, then you end up getting 1000 megahertz, which is the single data rate per memory chip. Uh, and this is true for pretty much all memory types except for HBM2. So let's go and start with the RX 580. So here's how you calculate it. Essentially you get 2000 and then you divide it by two to get the single data rate and then you times it by eight and there you go. Now, why do you times it by eight? Because there's eight memory chips on the PCB, which means eight lanes. So you times it by eight and there you go. You get the effective memory speed for the entire GPU. So what about GDDR5X? Well, it's pretty much the same process. So you get 1376, which is the memory clock speed, as we can see right here. And you divide it by two to get the single data rate speed and then you times it by eight and you're thinking, oh shit, I didn't get it right. Well, with GDDR5X, I believe that it's quad pumped memory, which means that you need to then take this number and times it by two. And there you go, you get the 11,008 megahertz effective memory clock. Now HBM is pretty similar in the same way as GDDR5X, except this time you divide instead of times by two. So you get 500, which is the memory clock speed. And then you divide it by two to get the single data rate speed. And then you times it by four this time, as opposed to eight, because in HBM memory, they stack the memory chips on top of each other. So there's only four lanes. And there you go, you get a thousand megahertz, which is the effective memory clock speed. And for Vega, it's pretty similar, except this time you don't divide this number by two. I don't quite know why. Uh, I don't know if it's because each memory chip isn't double data rate or what, but you don't do it in this case. So it's 400 and then you just times it by four and you get 1600 megahertz. But what about memory bandwidth? How the hell did they get this number? Well, it's pretty simple. It's almost the same, the same calculation. You just do something a little bit different. So we're gonna go 2000 and divide it by two to get the single data rate. Then you times it by eight to get eight lanes or eight chips. And then you times it by 256. And then you divide it by eight once again. Now, effectively you could do just 2000 divided by, or oh, times 256 and then divide it by two. So 2000 uh, divided by two times 256 and you could get the same number, but I just want to map out to you guys kind of the calculation that you do. So let's do it here for the GDDR5X and you'll see that we get the memory bandwidth. So in this case, we got 1376 and we divide that by two and we times it by eight and then we times it by two and then we times it by 350, 352, which is the memory bus width. And then we divide it by eight. And there you go, we got 484.352, which is 
Then for HBM, it's pretty much the same process. You get 500, you divide it by two, you times it by how many lanes there are, which is four. You get a thousand, you times that by 4096. Now, what you need to understand here is again, there's eight chips. This is why I always do the eight in the calculation. There's actually eight chips, but they're in stacks of two. So you gotta then divide this number by eight and you get 512 gigabits per second. And Vega is pretty much the same with its HBM2, except you do 400 times four. And then you times that by 2048, which is the supposed rumored memory bus. And then you just divide that by eight and you get 409.6 gigabits per second. So that's it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, comments, leave them in the comment section below. Like the video if you enjoyed this and I'll catch you guys in the next video.